this come out fast? No. Is that big enough? I guess. I mean, you're just gluing the plate first. Right, try it. That's good enough. Set that up to the side. Now just rub that in. We want to cover about the, you know, that area there. So I'd like to continue moving forward with the slow speed carbide lap build that we started last week. So we've got a box that's got an output shaft on it that's powered. Now we need to, some way to hook our abrasive discs that we got. These are six inches or 151 millimeters if I remember correctly. Not real thick, but yet uh, not super flexible. But I think this needs some sort of backer. Something to attach this to that attaches to the output shaft on the grind or something to reinforce it, right? So what I think that I'm going to use, wow, it's thundering pretty good out there is this half inch aluminum plate. So we'll lay out a six inch circle on this. We'll take it over to the lathe. We will trepan that circle out. And then there's a whole other list of things that we need to do to make that to where it will work with our grinder. So let's get started on that and we'll see how far we get on it. So kind of hard to see our lines here. We probably should have blued it, but we're gonna split this plate. I'm gonna use a K&T. Uh, to split that because I'm not sitting at the bandsaw all day to cut that in half. And there's our disc that we want, slightly larger than six inch. We'll trim it, trim it down when we, to size when we actually trepan this out. But you get the idea. So let's go split this plate and we'll, you know, we'll cut off some of this excess stock. I'm going to make it over these. I'm going to have to get some shorter uh, nuts here.
So I'm all set up in the lathe here to trepan our disc out. Now, originally I center punched this disc. I took my compass and I scribed a line just for reference because you know, it's easy to have something to work to. And then to square this disc up with the rotation of the lathe, my punch mark anyway, I put my brown and sharp wiggler in the lathe. These are spring loaded with the sharp point and I set that down in the bottom of my punch mark. Took test indicator and got as close up to the workpiece as I can with it and zeroed zeroed that on the punch mark. So I'm just moving the compound back and forth. Look at the highest reading. And as soon as it starts to drop off, I know that that is the peak. So we're going to zero it there. Then I can rotate the chuck and any deflection in that reading tells me that that center punch is not running concentric with the rotation of the lathe. So I just adjusted the jaws uh, based on my reading on the indicator there. I've also got this plate set off of the face of the jaws about an eighth of an inch so I can cut all the way through with my trepanning tool. And I also checked the face to make sure I had you know, as close to zero run out as I can get there. I've got about five thousandths in this because this is extruded plate and that's about as close as it's going to get, which is fine, right? So there we go. We're all set up to trepan out our disc. Let me show you the tool that we're going to use. Pretty, pretty neat and uh, we'll cut that out. So here's a look at the tool that we're going to use, specifically designed for trepanning. You can see that it's got uh, an arc in it there, and this one has the capabilities of cutting a diameter from 149 millimeters up to 250 millimeters, and anything above or, be, or below that, it doesn't have the clearance built in and is likely to rub. This is exactly the same, except for it is capable of cutting a smaller radius, means its geometry is a little different. Somebody's ground on this to make it cut a what looks like a, uh, a larger radius or a smaller radius, but you get the idea. This one will cut from 79 to 130 millimeters. Little carbide insert. This one's much more narrow than this one, but this one being, what, 149 millimeters is right below 6 inch, so we're right within the lower range of this uh, cutter here, so hopefully it will do the job. It'll be the first time I've ever used this. It was actually given to me by a viewer, both of these, sometime back. And you can see that it has some dovetails cut in it, probably for some specific holder on a CNC machine. And to make it work in my holder here, I just had to put this in the shaper and clean up the bottom a little bit so it would fit. So this will be the first first go. So let's stick it in the lathe and, and give it a try. It should work just fine. So the first thing that we're going to do is center drill this plate. Then we're going to drill it 1964, which is right below 5 16 And then we'll remove the remainder of the material with our 3115 reamer, which is 5 tenths below 5 16 which is what that shaft measures on the grinder. So let's get started and get the center hole, and then we'll trepan out the uh, actual disc. <laughs>
So that went pretty well. That tool worked worked awesome. It's almost like it was made for that. So quite the burr on this disc. Um, I cut this about an eighth of an inch larger than it needed to be. So it'll be slightly, slightly larger than the than the abrasive discs that go on it. It'll be fine. Really nice finish on that. Done a great job. So now it's time for me to mount this disc to the shaft that comes out of the side of the grinder. Now I'm gonna try a little alternative method, something that I haven't seen before, but I think that will work just fine. Now what I could do is just make a standoff that bolts onto the back here, drill and tap it for a set screw and be done with it. That would hold the shaft or this disc off the face of the grinder a bit. But what I'm gonna try is a set screw in through the top of the disc, actually three of them evenly spaced, and I've already divided this circle. Just took my center finder here, made a mark, took my dividers and walked around this circle until I got three even divisions. Mark those. So now I'm gonna drill in, and that's accurate enough for what I'm doing. Drill in and use some set screws to hold this to the, to the shaft of the grinder. That's what I'm gonna try anyway. Hopefully it'll work.
So we've got our plate drilled all the way through to the center in three spots. This drill is 135 thousandths. That's what we used. Then we come in and we drill the portion just probably half inch deep with our tap drill for our 1032. Then come in and tap the hole. But obviously it's not tapped all the way through so we can't screw that set screw all the way into it. Presses on the shaft. So what I'm going to use is a pusher rod. So this is an eighth inch piece of cold rolled. So it will be what actually put, pushes on the shaft and locks this disc in position. So we'll cut this to length. A section of that will be in the hole and the set screw will push on that and transfer it, you know, its energy into the shaft and hold it where it needs to be. That's the idea anyway. I think it'll work. So because I don't own a slow speed carbide grinder yet, I am in the process of building one. If you watched last week's video, you'll have seen that, but I'm not finished with it. And it, in order to use a scraper like this with a carbide edge on it, radius minus four, three to four degrees on the cutting edge, it's got two cutting edges, you pretty much have to have a slow speed lap of some sort to get a really nice edge on these. It's pretty tough to get with any other method than a slow speed lap really. But not having a sharp edge on one of these will work you to death. So you have to come up with something uh, to get that, get that edge to where it is sharp. And let me show you what I've been using up to this point because I'm still in the build process of my slow speed grinder to sharpen the edge on this. Because in my free time, what little I've had, I've been picking this up and making a couple passes on a few pieces of cast iron in order to uh, I can't say refine my technique because I don't have a technique because I'm not, not real experienced with one of these. Uh, more like build a technique probably um, and, and to learn, right? This is just like any other tool except for this requires quite a bit of time behind it before you develop the feel and the, and the skill to run one. I mean, like any other tool that requires hand-eye coordination and skill, you have to devote some time to it before it's you're any good at it. And that's what I've been trying to do. So this is what I've been using to sharpen my blades in the meantime, right? I went the long way around trying to explain that. But let me show you what I've been using. It works, but it's not ideal. So on the table of the tool and cutter grinder is my makeshift sharpening jig for my uh, carbide scraper. And all it is powered work head that goes with this machine that turns and does you know any type of cylindrical work my sign vise which is set up at negative four degrees a diamond lap that I just quickly turned down on the lathe so it's a one inch shank that goes into the 5c collet and then it's just a flat face obviously and on that face I roll in some diamond paste in order to basically embed that diamond particles in the face of that aluminum puck and then uh, you get the idea and then it becomes an abrasive lap and then come in with my carbide scraper but I take it out of the holder but you get the idea and then uh, hold it flat on top of the vise and work it back and forth that's how I've been getting the edge on my scraper to practice scraping so short term this works just fine but I don't want to have to do this every time I need to put an edge on this because it takes up the entire machine in order to to do such a simple operation so the dedicated carbide grinder or the slow speed lap is the way to go. So This is what I've been using just to get me by. So one of the downfalls to this setup is that it just doesn't hold the charge very long. Like the diamond just doesn't hold in, in that aluminum all that well and you have to come in and charge, recharge it. And I just put a little on a popsicle stick and I try to spread it around on there best I can. Not get it everywhere. But it's kind of hard to, 
to not get it everywhere, to be honest. And then the diamond, or the bearing. I'm just pushing on that, and moving it in. So this absolutely works, it's just not ideal, right? Let me show you uh, the cutting edge on this. So you can hopefully see that ridge that runs down the center. That's actually a high point, right? It's a peak like that. And the cutting edge runs off this way. And there's two cutting edges there. And one's a little shinier than the other, but a good sharp scraper should be able to peel up a little bit of fingernail. All right, it should catch and hold really well. So there you go. That is my scraper blade, and that is the edge that I'm trying to achieve. So I've been sitting here thinking about what is the best way to mount these discs to, to the base plate. And I've seen several people use the rare earth magnets. These are some uh, inch and a half rare earths, a little big, but you get the idea. And all I would need to do is pocket this out to where this magnet sit just below the surface. Black Max super glue these in. And then I could just stick the disc right to that and it would probably be perfectly fine. And several people have mentioned that. So that's an option. My concerns with that method is that, for one, this could potentially slip on here because the only thing holding it on is the magnet, which I'm almost certain that it wouldn't. My major concern with this method is that it will magnetize this disc. All of the grinding debris will congregate right where the magnets are and uh, make it hard to clean this thing. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, whether that's a real concern, I'm not for sure. I don't have any experience there, right? It's just assumption. So what I think that I'm gonna do is just drill this plate a couple button head 632s each disc that i have will be drilled now this will slow down disc changes right it won't be as fast but i'm certain that it won't slip and it won't be magnetized so i think that's what i'm going to do even though it's not the coolest way which would be the magnets and it doesn't allow for super fast disc changes i don't know that that's really necessary to be honest uh, and how hard is it to pull out two screws uh, in reality so i don't know i think that i'm going to use the uh, little button heads i think that's probably where i'll start i can always come back and put these in if if i decide that this is not uh, working for me.
Alright, so that should that should hold that for sure. Definitely not gonna come loose. That disc is not a hundred percent flat. Maybe it's the platen because I never turned that flat. Maybe I should maybe I should do that, but not now, all right? We're just seeing what works really. This is set to four degrees. So it's actually uh, just mimicking the platen that'll run all the way across the front of this disc. I'm gonna grab a scraper and see if this thing, see how it works as far as the sharpening. I know it doesn't have as much torque as what I would like. We'll see, right? A little harder. Flip it over, see if it cuts better. Mm -hmm. okay, flip it back. It needs sharpen, but I just took all my the sharpening set up that I had on the power grinder off. Don't wipe it. That's the, the, the blue is uh, what tells you where you need to go. So tell me, so tell me what did you think about your first scraping experience? <laughs> was it as fun as you thought it would be? So exciting. That wasn't bad. Is it, is it, it, wasn't it bad. was it as exciting as it looks? No. <laughs> <laughs> You've done a good job. Well, here's what rotten wood's ready for garden. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Right there. That's, that's good stuff. Just you going to put that in the sweet potatoes? Underneath them. Uh -huh. I'll dig a trench, fill up the trench, and then make a ridge up over it. Yep. That's what I'll do. That's mostly rotten wood. A lot of people haul their brush away and pay to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. But it's it's worth money if you got yep. it. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. I'm going to put a few heels right out through here. Sweet potatoes. I'll get my, put my, get my ridge about this, my ditch about that deep, mm -hmm. then I'll just fill it up, and then I'll bring the dirt up over that, and put it in a plant my sweet potatoes. Hmm. Yeah, some good looking stuff. I don't have that as fertilized. Yeah. I do that, I put that under the tomatoes too. Those tomatoes look really good. One big okay. shovel full to each hill. Yep, they got good strong stalks on them. They don't look spindly. Everything's looking pretty good. Hopefully, it keeps it up. Yeah, it, it should if we get enough rain, you know. Yep. We've been getting too much rain. Yeah, it's it been might... wet kind of got a little bit of late start this year and, and it's been pretty wet this early this summer or spring really well I like the late garden I think it just does better the weather settles down and yeah yeah it's less uh, up and down up and... tomatoes they they like the hot humid weather don't they, they? Like hot. they like hot weather same thing as back yep
yeah there's they're starting off I'm gonna have to get my baskets and stakes and stuff out yeah yeah pretty soon now yeah they'll get to where they start falling over if you don't now, tomatoes like loose rich ground yeah what they like and and a lot of heat they like the same thing as tobacco yeah seems like with tomatoes it's either feast or famine yeah either do great one year and get more than you can handle and you're giving them away or yeah. you don't have any yeah. yeah he's been eyeballing that spot there is a mouse over there must be Mouse Did hunter. You see a mouse? Did you see a mouse? So I've been messing with this thing for a minute. It's absolutely awesome. It works amazingly well. Yeah, I gotta build the, the plate out front, right? We're just temporarily using the, the vise here. But I've got it set on about five and a half. Not a ton of power, but this thing doesn't need it. This is plenty for what we need to do, and it's putting an awesome edge on this thing. And this is the most least aggressive disc that I have, 3,000 grit. So now I can make some more of these. I can use the more ag aggressive discs to get my radius that I want. I'm going to make several different tips with a couple different radiuses on them. And there you go. It's awesome. So now the next step is to uh, build the plate out front, the adjustable plate. Definitely very promising the way that this thing is working. So I could not be happier with the way that that thing works. I was a bit concerned that it was gonna be uh, underpowered because it doesn't have a lot of extra power, but it's got plenty uh, to, to do the job. And it's so much easier than charging a diamond lap with that uh, abrasive paste, rolling the diamond in, you know, and it's it's just faster, right? It cuts immediately with these uh, plated, or yeah, plated discs, uh, so much nicer. So now that I'm happy with the way that this thing works, I'm confident that it's gonna do what I need to do. I'm gonna move forward with making the front. You know, we'll probably shorten this box by about an inch, make it look a little more proportional, probably put some vents in the side because this motor is an air-cooled motor, so it needs some circulation. Put a handle on top of some sort, some, something like this, right? Maybe fixed, maybe a folder. Yeah, who knows? We'll, we'll see as we, as we move forward. Paint the thing, some decals, on and on and on. Something like this is a lot of work, especially if you got five other projects going on in the shop but this is all I had time to share with you this week so that's it thanks for watching thanks to my viewers patrons subscribers anybody who supported me on this project at all my youtube ventures in general right much appreciated and i couldn't imagine doing it without some help every once in a while so that's it thanks for watching and uh, i'll see you next time Rainy days don't seem so wet Stormy nights don't stay From the moment that we met You're worth the wait Oh, this could be the best thing that I'll ever know Talk for hours and never slept Two silhouettes on the concrete steps We watched the sun as it slept